Hi. I bring you greetings from Holy Morgans. We are going to have a conversation about organs and especially the need for you to invest in Holy Morgans. There's a special initiative right here in Ghana built by a Ghanaian and uh, with a workforce who are all Ghanaian. So I encourage you to follow this conversation and also try to get one for your church or your private homes. You know, organs are closely linked to churches. Internationally, wherever you go, you see a church with an organ. Unfortunately, we don't have that in our part of the world. It's because we all know the obvious, maybe the cost, um, something else. But um, I am encouraging everybody to follow this conversation. So together with me on this discussion is the CEO of Olive Organs, himself a seasoned musician and organist. Mr. Samuel Kofi, and um, a professional organist, a schooled musician, a schooled organist, Mr. Augustine Sobin, who had his professional training from the United States of America. You're welcome, Mr. Samuel Kofi. Thanks for having me here. It's wonderful having you on the show, and I'm sure we're going to have a wonderful time. Mr. Sobin, yes. Augustine Kofi Sobin, the organist in the flesh. You're welcome to Hey, thank you. Good to see you. Uh, thank you. It's just this. Mr. Goff, I want to just know what you brought about the idea of Why organs? Why, of all the things in the world, why would you decide to build organs? I mean, what was you So, Brother James, thanks for your question. Um, I had an opportunity to pursue my master's in the United Kingdom. And I came across several parts of them. So I was contacted by the Ghana Man Presbyterian Association and it's one of their congregations over there. I gave up three congregations over there. So, so I came across several Bible plans. Upon my return, I realized my church of now wasn't giving me the quality I was expecting. So in my quest to tune my organ, I came across a software by the name Optwork. Let me cut you. I want to ask. You mentioned that you were playing for three churches in the UK. Yes. Are you saying that all those churches had organs? Yes. Well, please carry on. They all have five organs, not just the tabletop organs or the traditional organs we have to play, but five or even five organs. So in my quest to tune my organ in Ghana, that is when I came across the software called Optic. And so upon reading I realized I could actually make a business out of this. I could actually turn my passions into work. So I had to go out. I traveled outside to meet one of the teachers, which is uh, Nigel Stark. So he took me through some studies, taught me much about the software and how the pipe works. So it was through that. That is why today we are seeing that the school is really That's nice. That's very interesting and encouraging. Mr. Sobe, I want to ask a personal question. Mm -hmm. Why the organ? I mean, how did it come about? The organ itself. I mean, I know when you go to Europe, for instance, every church has an organ. But why the organ? I mean, maybe they could develop something else, but why the organ? Okay, so I guess I should begin from, the, from stating this fact that Electricity is a very modern invention. It's relatively uh, few modern. Like it came in the 20th century, perhaps for some countries, it's just the industrial revolution where things began to become electrical. Okay. So we must take note that before that century, everything was acoustic. That's a very important foundation for we build everything. So the pipe organ and any other keyboard instrument, another important fact is that. The organ is not the only keyboard instrument. Keyboard instruments are instruments with keyboards. Even some percussion instruments, like the mallet, those, those which use mallets, like the marimba, marimba and xylophone and things, they are keyboard disposed, right? So all keyboard instruments, string instruments, flute instruments, all those things were acoustic. So the, the pipe organ, if you listen to the name, the pipe, is 
we have defined new feature of the pipe organ. So I think classical definition of a pipe organ is a keyboard instrument which produces sound by forcing pressurized air through pipes. Okay. So a pipe organ is a keyboard which produces sound through pipes. Oh. And there are many mechanisms linking the keyboard to the pipe, but that's the general. Uh, so when we define all organs as pipe organs, is that right? Phenomenal. No. That's absolutely true. It's just that we don't know. Yes, in fact, if you don't see a pipe, that thing must not even come up in the first place. Wow. Yeah. yeah. How would you call that? You know, I know we, are, we are getting there. We are getting there. Oh, it's impressive. And um, around what year are we talking about? I mean, when the, how did the organ were developed? When yeah. did it start? Yeah, there are many theories around this, but early organs were um, the early, when you go back far enough, you find organs which were based on water pressurizing. As for the system, it has always been the same. Something will pressure the air. But it is in recent organs that we use ele electricity to pump, like to pump the, the air. Before, they used water. So they were water organs, right? Wow. And then we had some wind organs that, if you remember, you would actually force the mechanism directly with your, with your foot. Yeah, they made some of those organs. The harmonium. The harmonium and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 We, we had one in my home church. Yes. And, uh, in fact, until recently, we was still there. Yeah. And, and it was, it was Quite loud. You hear um, more sound coming from, them. and they sound yeah. like they sound yeah. like accordions. I'll bet. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So if you think about the accordion, it's like it actually gives you a, a complete picture of how the principle is working. You pressurize the air, and then perhaps you play the notes. Some accordions have keyboards with it. Okay. Nice. So, Mister Sobi, my second question to you is that why is the organ so linked to church? Why we even refer to it as church organ? Yes. Why do we call it the church organ? Yes. Is it that the church developed it or it, it developed somewhere and the church adapted it. It's developed alongside church music. So the earliest uh, instrument that was, that sort of moved hand in hand with choral singing. Right, if you go far back, even in the 14th, 13th centuries, right, they had portable instruments, like, you know, high instruments. So they call some of those keyboards portative instrument, positive. Some of you would have realized that on some keyboards you find a voice called positive. Mm -hmm. Or even the first manual, if you if you look at this organ, the first manual there, its actual name is the positive. And it happens to be probably the, the milder sounding version of the great organ, right? So the positive was a small instrument, it's called the portative, that was used to accompany. It was just one manual. That's where it started from. It went through the pipe, it was a very small instrument, but it was used in the church. Even the development of the pipe organ, yeah, including its expansion, is linked to the church. For example, you know of antiphony? Yes. Yes. It was actually a principle that was used in the early cathedrals, like St. Venice. They had choirs which were put in antiphonal. Mm -hmm. Like this choir was saying, this choir will respond because of the size of the church. Right? So they had one pass applying the back gallery and another part supplying in the middle and they arranged music that would make them sort of antiphonal. Yeah. Yes. And so they built the organs like that. So yeah. they provided an antiphonal division which sounded like, like from the back of the building. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So it's directly linked with church organs. Everything about it. That's a wonderful uh, historical background to the use of the organ. It's fantastic. So why don't you have your organs in our churches these days? To complement um, the singing of the congregation in the choir. Mr. Kofi, do you think we are missing something? The, the beautiful music or whatever we should hear in the church because we don't have organs. Thank you, Brother James. Um, the church organ is also known by others as the king of instruments. And some school of thought also claim it's that is the voice of God. Yeah. Why is it so? Because if we go into the Bible, you find earlier when we said we mentioned the choirs were placed in antiphonals. Antiphonies or rather. So a replica of that is what we are also doing here. So we place the speakers in antiphonals antiphonals for you to represent whatever it is we are making in heaven. And again, even we have this particular song. And I heard a voice from heaven as a name, a voice of many, whatever. You get to 
where God speaks in a thunderous voice, and for you to express that you have something called a crescendo. So you step on that and give you the effect of like a, like a thunderous voice. It sounds like God is talking to you. And deep down, you feel it in your heart, like you feel the vibrations. So for me, I think the churches are not bringing out the music properly because, in terms of dynamics, where you have to swell, you have to crescendo or decrescend, this has the ability to do that. For the tabletops, it limits you a lot. It limits you a lot. And I think these things have to do with the, the seriousness of the music enterprise in the church. For example, I mean, if I am concerned about something enough, then it gets to the point that I need to think about the details. Like, okay, so the fire sound, it is so hard to work, but the sound of the organism really working with. I mean, as the pastor ever gets to the point where he thinks about all that the fire is producing, or they are just, he's just okay with the fact that the fire sound and them to be. Right? Is there anything you can do to make their output better? If that, if that happens, then we we'll automatically get to the point where we realize what we need is the organ. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. sometimes don't you think sing anthems on regular basis? So, I think. Suppose like I think an anthem like, I was glad. There would be no way <laughs> to play it without having an organ. Yeah, there would not be a proper way having that music. Yes. But we are doing it in the churches. We, we, we are using synthesizers. So, Mr. Zobe, this brings me to my next question. What is the advantage of this machine, the organ, over the synthesizer? Synthesizer, I mean the keyboard, small keyboard instrument that we use. So, I just want to know, what are some of the things that this can give as that the synthesizer can never, or it's just mimicking? That's a good question. Can I use this? So I, I need to show a few things here. Since it's here, then everything can be as practical as possible. There are a few things I need to show here. In demonstration of the things that are here that you are definitely not going to find on the keyboard. There will be more than what I will say. I'm just going to give the, the most prominent features that the organ has. First off is the independently enclosed division. What does that mean? So, to begin with, a keyboard has one keyboard. Uh, an organ has, as you can see, multiple keyboards, mm -hmm. which in organ terms is a manual, right? So in this case, four manual. Four manual, this is a four manual organ, right? You often find a three manual organ in the country. So this is also one of a few organs that have four manuals. And then there's the pedal board. Physically, this is very different, but how about in utility. Right? When I say they are independently enclosed, that means this manual can function separately from this manual, independently from this. All four can function separately, and the pedal board as well. And they all have the, the, the stop setup, like that's the sound, how you create the sound, right? This is taking care of that, this and that. Those are the stop sections. So that's how you control the sound, and that's how you play it. So I can set this differently from this, and set this one differently from that, and that. And you can control them differently by using these expression pedal that you see down here. Do you see that? Yes. So that's first of all a big uh, advantage of this over the synthesizer. The synthesizer gives you the opportunity to control overall volume. And perhaps if you split it up, like if you split the, the voices, then you get to control like the layers. That's the maximum you can do, but the setup will be the same. Whereas here, you even have divisionals by which you can control the sound on this, change the sound on this, and nothing else has changed. So I'll just play something to show you. I've set this up already to have a different voice here, than here, than here, and then here. And so I'll use to play something pretty English sounding, but not really written by an English person.
setup have a different feeling, a different, you know, tonal setup for the solo. This was also functioning as a solo, but it was set up differently, right? And this was providing that complement. Tell me how you do that on the keyboard, right? And you have the pedal giving you the foundation. So, you know, that's uh, one of the big things about the organ that makes it uh, uniquely supreme. The other thing you need to know about the pipe organ is the availability of multiple ranks. And that means you can layer ranks upon ranks severally until you have the, the loudest like sound possible. Not only because of volume, which is actually a very distinct feature of the organ. You don't just get volume, you get texture, you get widening of the texture. And that's how it sounds so pump, right? As Samuel mentioned earlier that it's the king of instruments. If there's one reason why the organ qualifies to be called so, it is that. It's able to produce just an enormous volume of sound, not just by volume alone, but by inclusion of sounds. This is not just, uh, you've, you've, you've not just selected one voice and added another voice and then opened the volume. This is. If I try to go from the beginning, you see. stops in separation, you can select various combinations of the stops to get distinct sounds, and then you can put them together to get one big plenum or one big grand or the French will say. Today we have been educated about the organ. It's, it's so awesome. With wonderful insights. And uh, now I'm just going to throw it to the chief executive officer, the organ builder himself, to tell us the advantages of having this wonderful organ. It's, it's so nice. Aesthetically, it's so beautiful. And uh, I would like to know, or people would like to know, what are the advantages of having this organ uh, instead of any other church organ? Any other organ? There are so many of them. There are so many organ manufacturers. Our first organ to be manufactured in Ghana is the olive organ, and we love it. But I would like to know why olive organ? What are my advantages? Okay, thanks for your question. First of all, this is a something out wood. It's a pure wood. What we have in Ghana from our various traditional organs are chipboards. But if you compare it to this one, this is a pure wood. So if you listen to the sound. And again, um, you know, in Africa, we have partial conditions. Our uh, weather is very hot. Again, we are along the coastal areas. So in terms of um, salt water, it cannot affect us because we process it properly. It takes about a month for it to be processed before we start working on the organ. And if I go to the software, since it's a software-based organ, it has the ability to go through updates. And again, this is the closest you can ever get to an American pipe organ. Why am I saying so? Augustine just played an English organ. And if you go to Peterborough right now, the pipe organ setup, that is what we have over here. It's the same, the same. It is no different from whatever we have in Peterborough. So I remember a bit came to me and he was like, Sam, do you have a French organ? And I'm like, yeah, we have a French organ. I have a camera call. It was like, yes, that's what he wants. So from here, we can change that organ. So this is what organ? We are going to a French organ. A French organ, yes. On the same machine. On the same machine. So you can just swap it, swap it, yes. So what we say French organ, really, we are, we are trying to say that the organ developed that way in that geographic location. 
So unlike many other instruments, this organs sort of relate with their geographic location. Germans have a way they construct their organs. Uh, Netherlands had a way, especially in Europe, because that's where organ building was centered. So what I want to understand is that this organ, this olive organ, can actually change so many instruments. You can have so many pipe organs on one console. Wow. So I don't need to just get an organ who, who, which will give me French organ. No. But rather this can give me the French, the English. Yes. Wow. So in fact, you are not limited to one console, one style. Oh, that's impressive. Yeah. You get to have handy what some famous so organist. This one is a camera for a famous French organ builder. Mm -hmm. So the sound has been sampled. And exactly the same sound as you are hearing. If you go to the cabal hall, if you get closer to any cabal hall instrument, it's exactly the same sound. <laughs> which is also an English organ. We have the Rotterdam organ. That one is located in the Netherlands. We have Bob and Kek Camping Hins organ. It's also in the Netherlands. So okay. we have all, all so those organs, organs you're mentioning on one organ. On one organ. Beautiful. So this is a French organ. Um, so just as I said, you are not limited. You have various options, a wide range, and in the comfort of your home, you have access to so many pipe organs throughout the world. That's the advantage this one gives you. And it also has the ability to record. You can record, have the wave file, you play it in your car. So instead of going to a studio to go and uh, schedule yourself for a, a time to come and record, just record everything over here, take it on your pen drive. If you listen to it in your car, you feel you need to make some changes, you can come. We can make the changes for you. Yeah. And and why is this advantageous for a church organist? I mean, a church organist is not really thinking about having the several uh, organs for this church, right? You get to sample between them all, or, or, or like oscillate between one organ and the next, based on your church's design or how the sound works in your church, right? It is. There are some organs here that are better suited to some type of music than some others, like English organs will work very well for general church settings. And you will find other organs that will work well for some specific anthem you may want to do on a, on a certain day. Right? The, the possibilities are endless. You need to have a feel of what this is going to do for you. And you will not get it until you get an olive organ, that's for sure. Yeah. And uh, please speak to us about uh, specification. If I come and say I don't want the organ this way, I want it this way. Are you going to build to my specification? Can you do that for me? Yes, most definitely. Uh, it's customizable. Uh, we do it to your satisfaction. Wow. Someone is actually requesting for a black organ. And yeah, it's in a pipeline, we are doing it for you. Wow. So you can you can uh, you can change colors. Yes, yeah, someone actually also wants a white organ. Wow. So we are compelled to go to the drawing board and see how best we can do it. Right. Okay, Mr. So Sobin, my question to you. Are organs expensive? I mean, you studied in the US and you know that um, there are organs everywhere, yes. including um, even halls, school halls, and uh, even countries. So, I just want to ask, are organs that cheap? that you find it everywhere in the United States or Boston? No, their organs are very expensive. They are expensive both to acquire and to maintain. Um, I mean, what I found <laughs> at the latter part of my stay there was that a single pipe, right, well constructed, will cost you somewhere between $5,000 and $7,000. Not a full organ? No, a pipe. and so. If you will take a look at the keyboard, there are supposedly 61, right? Per a keyboard. For each keyboard, for one rank, say for one voice like this one, each one stop is having 61 pipes. And the stops are, say, 70. 
So you multiply 70, maybe even 100, by 61, and multiply that by 7,000. That's the price you're looking at. Wonderful. Multiply by five times. <laughs> so please, just tell me how much is an organ, the least of an organ. They are expensive. I mean, uh, a regular, say, a two manual instrument. And yes, again, you can build that to your specification. You ask that uh, based on your pricing or the, the amount you can handle mm -hmm. and the need of your church. Maybe you want a moderate number of stops. Then, yeah, you could get something well built, maybe a quarter to a half a million dollars. Wow. That's serious. Yeah. Um, the Ghanaian mentality, I would have asked, uh, how, how many cements would I get from you? <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. But, <laughs> Mr. Kofi, so how cheap or how expensive is this olive organ? Okay, for olive organs, if you have between $15,000 to $30,000, you either get a two manual, three manual, or a four manual. Wow. Fifteen thousand US yes. to thirty thousand US dollars. Yes. I could own one of these organs with all the advantages. Yes, because I okay, mentioned the fact that it's expensive to maintain an organ. Yes. Um, not this organ. This is not expensive to maintain because this is technology based. Yes, and you can always upgrade yes. with all these advantages. It is cheaper than the organs. That's yeah, and maintaining can be a pain. I mean, you have to blow the pipes as frequently as possible. And then there's the thing about tuning it, right? I mean, pipes change their tuning based on temperature. So when the temperature goes down, then it's going to become flat. The loads are going to play flat. So especially before competitions or such, then you have to tune the organ every time. And the bill is on the change. can cost you over hundred thousand dollars. Wonderful. But then they are determined to do it, so then it's, uh, it's, it's prestige for the church. They are right. to that, yeah. It is prestigious to own an organ, yeah. especially as a church. Because as we spend resources to build churches fitting enough to praise God, so should we think that we can also put things, adornment, things that make worship better. And one of such experiences is the organ. So, um, I think our people should be encouraged. If not for anything, it's an African initiative. Come to Oli Hogan, let's do business. And you will end up fitting a wonderful organ in your church, in your home. You can have a home organ, a church organ, for as low as 15,000 US dollars to a maximum of 30,000 US dollars. What are we waiting for? It's been a wonderful time together. It's been a wonderful time going through yes. a wonderful machine organ, specifically the only organ. Yeah. And uh, I believe people are watching, people are listening, people will follow up. Wow! It's been a wonderful time with my brethren. And uh, uh, I think every information you need, or whatever you need to learn about the organ, has been given. Please, let's support an African initiative, the Olive Organs. We are here for you. Just call the numbers showing on your screen. We are email address, everything is showing on the screen. Rush, come and let's do business. I am certain you will never regret owning an Olive Organ. So, just call the numbers showing on your screen. I am certain, I am sure that you will never regret. Let's do business and support an African initiative. Thank you.